Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Star Wars capsule. Even some of the biggest Star Wars fans in the world might not know that there is a secret Star Wars time capsule somewhere out there. It's buried at Skywalker Ranch in California. It was put there by Star Wars creator George Lucas. He put it in the corner of the building and filled it with secret artifacts from the Star Wars movies. George was once asked when would this time capsule be opened and he said never, literally never. Well not quite never but he wants it to be discovered in the distant future by archaeologists. This is bad news for die-hard Star Wars fans out there who are really hoping to one day see the priceless contents of this time capsule. Moving on now to number 9, we have the Millennium Time Capsule. Now as you guys might guess from the name, this time capsule was buried at the turn of the millennium in the year 2000. It was sealed by the White House and contains a number of culturally significant items from history. These include a CD, photos of Earth from space, a computer chip, a World War II helmet, a cell phone, a piece of the Berlin Wall and even a photo of Rosa Parks. There's also a pair of Ray Charles sunglasses because you know why not? For me though the most interesting thing they put in there might actually be Twinkies. Yeah an actual pack of Twinkies. However I also read that the Twinkies were later removed because they were attracting mice. I guess people in a thousand years will know a lot about our world but almost nothing about Twinkies. What a shame. Next up at number 8 now we have the largest time capsule. The town of Seward, Nebraska claims to have the world's largest time capsule. It was constructed by local store owner Harold Keith Davison who wanted his grandchildren to know what his life was like when he buried it in 1975. The 45-ton vault was buried under a mound of dirt on the front lawn of his appliance store. It's packed with artifacts from his own life and also general items from the 1970s. The most striking item has to be his Chevy Vega car which still sits inside the vault to this day. Moving on now to number 7 we have the Westinghouse time capsules. These are a pair of time capsules prepared by the Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company. The first one was buried for the 1939 New York World Fair and contained fabrics, metals, plastics, literature, art and news events from the time recorded on microfilm. The capsules are intended to be open in the year 6939, a full 5,000 years years after they were buried. In that distant future our language and culture may be so different that whoever finds the capsule may not know what to do with any of the items inside. This is why the creators of the time capsule included detailed instructions on how to make a microfilm viewer and also a projector for the newsreels. I'm sure the future humans will really appreciate that. Next up at number 6 now we have the Helium Centennial Time Columns Monument. This was constructed in 1968 to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the discovery of helium. The time capsule is actually made up of four different parts. The different parts are supposed to be opened after 25 years and 50, then 100 and then 1000 years. The first two have already been opened but the third will not be opened until the year 2068 and the final one until the year 3068. Now that last capsule contains a passbook for a $10 savings account from an Oklahoma City bank which draws 4% interest every year. After 1000 years it will be worth worth over one quadrillion dollars. So definitely worth the wait. Next up at number 5 now we have Keo. Technically Keo isn't a time capsule yet. But for me, it's too interesting to not include on this list. Keo is a proposed space time capsule which was intended to launch back in 2003. It would be set on a course that would lead back to Earth 50,000 years in the future. It sounded like the perfect time capsule. It would be out there drifting in space without ever being tainted or ruined by people here on Earth. And what would the world look like when it finally landed again in 50,000 years? Well, fans of the project have been left wondering those questions. The project was delayed until 2006, then to 2007, then 2008, then 2010 and then basically every year since then. Currently the Kia website cites 2009 as its launch. They are inviting every person in the world to contribute to their capsule. They are looking for people to post messages to the people living 50,000 years in the future. They promise that every message will be included without any censorship. Although Kia has been delaying its launch now for over 15 years, many people still send their messages to them just in case the project ever does go ahead. Moving on now to number 4 we have the CN Tower. Some of you may be surprised to learn that our channel is based in Toronto, Canada. Perhaps the most iconic landmark in this city is the CN Tower. 
Standing at over 1800 feet, it's towered over the city since its completion in 1976. To mark the occasion, a time capsule was placed at the very top of the tower inside the walls of the lookout level. It's intended to be opened in the year 2076, a century after its completion. Inside, the contents contain a letter from former Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau, letters from school children at the time, copies of three newspapers, Canadian coins and bills, and even a video about how the tower was constructed. Ah, oh, isn't that nice? Next up at number 3 now, we have the Crypt of Civilization. This is a sealed airtight chamber from 1940 at Oglethorpe University in Georgia. The 2000 cubic foot room contains many artifacts from the time including everyday items, famous books, voice recordings of people such as Franklin Roosevelt or Adolf Hitler, and even a sound recording of Popeye. Don't know why. The time capsule was thought up by Thornwell Jacobs, who felt that there was so little information available from ancient civilizations and that someone had to make sure that this never happened again. He stated that because the ancient Egyptian calendar was established 6177 years before this vault was sealed, that is also how long the vault should be sealed for. This means the crypt of civilization will not be opened until the year 8113. So far only about 78 years have passed so there's still quite a while to go yet. At the number 2 spot now we have Time Capsule Expo 1970. In 1968, two Japanese companies, Panasonic and the Mainichi newspapers agreed to build a joint time capsule for the Japan World Exposition in 1970. It was opened up again in the year 2000 to examine its contents. It was decided that the capsule would be checked for this every 100 years. For how long? I hear you ask. Until the year 6968, 5000 years after it was buried. When archaeologists of the future dig it up, they will find the time capsule contains items such as false teeth, a glass eye, insects in resin, an origami book, handcuffs and even fake money. A competition was held among local Japanese school children to write a letter to the people living 5,000 years in the future. The winning entry read, How are you, people of 5,000 years from now? I wish I could live again in your age, but I am quite happy now. I have kind parents and also a sister with whom I quarrel with once in a while. We must do our best until the next age takes over. Goodbye from 5,000 years in the past. And finally at number 1 now we have the Yahoo capsule. In 2006, tech company Yahoo set up a time capsule project where users could contribute to how digital life was like in the year 2006. When they cut off the submissions, they had received over 170,000 messages, with the largest amount coming from people in their 20s. The collection was then sealed and given to the Smithsonian Folkways Recordings in Washington DC. It was decided that the capsule will be opened in 2020 to mark the 25th birthday of Yahoo. The capsule will only have been sealed for about 14 years by that point, but as I'm sure many of you are aware, that might as well be a thousand years when it comes to the changing landscape of of the internet. Starting off at number 10 now we have Disneyland. Most people who visit Disneyland in California are there for the rides, the shows and the fireworks. Very few of the millions of visitors are aware of the Disneyland time capsule. In 1995 cast members of the park built a time capsule to commemorate the park's 40th anniversary. The plaque reads, a time castle containing Disneyland memories, messages and milestones lies beneath this spot. The Disneyland time capsule is dedicated to the children of the 21st century who may unlock its contents on the 80th anniversary of Disneyland, July 17th, 2035. The time capsule is buried in the center court off Main Street. It contains photos, newspapers, an Indiana Jones decoder card, whatever that is, and loads of other Disneyland memorabilia. Disney California Adventure also did the same thing in 2012, leaving a time capsule there to be opened in 2037. Moving on to number 9 now, we have the Immortality Drive. This one is just too cool. I love this one. The Immortality Drive is a large memory device that was taken to the International Space Station on October 12th, 2008. It contains the digitalized DNA sequence of a select group of humans. These include Stephen Hawking, Stephen Colbert, Joe Garcia, Richard Garriott, Tracy and Laura Hickman, as well as Matt Morgan and Lance Armstrong. So why are the DNA sequences of all these random famous people there? Well, the purpose is to preserve human DNA in this time capsule in Earth's orbit in case some global cataclysm happens down here. That's right, if there was some sort of nuclear war or a zombie apocalypse that just wipes out most of humanity, scientists could theoretically use this DNA time capsule to help restart the population. Or maybe it's not even meant for the scientists, but for aliens that finally get here in a million years and all they find is the immortality drive. And maybe they just 
make new humans from it. I think I just wrote a sci-fi movie. Coming in at number 8 now we have the General Dynamic Astronautics Time Capsule. This time capsule consists of a booklet simply titled 2063 AD. It was sealed in July 1963 and contains predictions by scientists, politicians, astronauts and military commanders about the state of space exploration in the year 2063. The introduction to the booklet reads as follows. This archive records the predictions sealed in a time capsule during ceremonies commemorating the 5th anniversary of the dedication of the General Dynamics Astronautics Facility. The time capsule is located on the west ramp entrance of the General Dynamics Astronautics Facility at 5001 Kearney Villa Road, San Diego, California. The capsule is to be opened on July 13, 2063. Now guys I found this one quite interesting because we're already over the halfway point now to 2063, there's only 44 years left out of the 100. Maybe I don't know enough about space travel at the moment but honestly humanity doesn't seem to have done too much in terms of at least manned missions since the 1960s, hopefully someone who knows a lot more than me can tell me I'm very wrong in the comment section below. Moving on to number 7 now we have the MLK time capsule. In 1963 Martin Luther King Jr gave his famous I have a dream speech at the Western Plaza in Washington DC. 25 years later in 1988 Western Plaza was renamed Freedom Plaza in honour of Martin Luther King Jr. A time capsule was also buried there to commemorate the occasion. It contains an assortment of MLK's personal items such as his bible, a robe he wore to preach in and even some audio recordings of some of his speeches. The time capsule is set to be opened in 2088, exactly 100 years after it was first laid down. Next up number 6 now we have FDR's time capsule. In 1940 former US President Franklin Delano Roosevelt buried a time capsule. It was buried at the University of Pennsylvania and it's massive. It weighs over 450 pounds. That's pretty heavy for a time capsule. There must be some serious load in there but the interesting thing is nobody knows what's inside it. That's pretty strange. You'd think that a massive time capsule buried by an actual US President at a university would be well documented but it's not really. The only thing we know other than its weight is when it can be opened, 2040, exactly 100 years after FDR laid it down. I don't know about you guys but I'm really excited to know what's inside this. We just have to wait though. Moving on to number 5 now we have Nickelodeon. Disney are the only kids company that have got in on the time capsule game. In 1992 a time capsule was buried at Nickelodeon Studios. It was later moved to a different studio in 2005 and then again in 2016. It now lies at the Nickelodeon Animation Studio and is set to be opened in 2042, 50 years after it was first sealed. So what's inside? Well Nickelodeon got together with the Kids World Council, yes that's a real thing, and they decided what was the the most important things to kids at that time. These included movies such as Back to the Future and Home Alone on VHS of course, MC Hammer and Michael Jackson CDs, a Nintendo Game Boy, Rollerblades and some Reebok Pump sneakers. They also put pencils, a skateboard, a baseball and even a Twinkie in there. This is actually the second time capsule I've talked about recently where they put a Twinkie inside. What is all that about? I've heard that Twinkies do last for years if they are sealed in their packets. Is that why? Are people burying Twinkies and just sort of storing them for future generations to try? Will they like them? I guess we'll have to wait to find out. Maybe Twinkies will actually still be sold then now I think about it. Awkward. Moving on now to the number 4 spot we have Perth Observatory. This building was constructed in 1896 in order to help keep time for the whole of Western Australia. When the foundation was laid the ceremony was attended by Sir John Forrest and a number of other notable dignitaries. They constructed a time capsule out of a lead box and placed it directly beneath a foundation stone. According to the local press it contained Rontgen Ray's tubes, a description of the process together with specimen photographs. These were all donated by x-ray pioneer William John Hancock. This time capsule is quite special because it's not only the first known time capsule buried in that area but in the whole of Australia in general. At the time of recording this video this time capsule has been underground for over 122 years and counting. There are currently no plans to open the time capsule unless the building is destroyed for some reason. The government announced in 2013 that all research programs would be cut at the observatory but the building itself would remain open for tours. That means that for the time being the oldest time capsule in Australia remains safely in place with no plans to open it in the near future. Next up at the number 3 spot now we have the largest axe. 
1991, a monument called the world's largest axe was built in New Brunswick to celebrate the legacy of Canadian lumberjacks. It's an impressive sight to see. It may very well be the largest axe in the world, but not everyone knows that there is actually a time capsule hidden in the head of the axe. The axe is 23 feet long and made of a solid 55 tons of steel. The handle goes up 50 feet into the air and the stump that the axe is buried into is made of concrete and it's 33 feet in diameter. Mind blowing dimensions there. The time capsule is buried inside the head of this huge structure and it looks like it will remain this way unless someone attempts to destroy it. Obviously that will be horrible and good luck trying to destroy the world's biggest axe anyway. One day in the distant future it may be discovered though as long as nobody forgets where it is. Otherwise I doubt that people will just go randomly breaking open the largest axe in the world. Did I mention it was the largest axe in the world? Moving on to the number two spot now, we have the Bacardi capsule. A lot of the time, capsules that I've talked about in these videos are buried by governments or schools, that sort of thing. This is definitely the first one I've talked about that was buried by a rum company, or at least an alcohol company, specifically Bacardi. It was buried in the Bacardi headquarters in Bermuda to celebrate 150 years since Bacardi was founded. It was intended to be a sort of living snack shot of the company in 2012 and contained messages from members of lots of different levels of the company. The messages were addressed to Bacardi employees of 2062. That year will mark the 200th anniversary of the company being founded and the time capsule will then be opened up. The time capsule also contains photographs of nearly 500 Bacardi employees representing eight generations. There was also a commemorative medal honoring Bacardi rum as the world's most awarded spirit. Then there was a letter written in an ancient style of Chinese characters from their Chinese based employees, a letter from their German employees and a decorated African gourd. These are just some of the items from all over the world that are in there. The time capsule will be opened in a further 43 years and not a moment sooner. And finally at the number one spot now we have Tesla. The Arch Mission Foundation is an organization with a goal to create deposits of human knowledge around the solar system. They believe that the more spread out our knowledge is, the more likely it is to survive any sort of disaster so that it can be preserved for future generations. In December 2017, the company's co-founder Novak Spivak heard that SpaceX was launching a Tesla into space. He actually tweeted at Elon Musk who agreed to put the Arch disk of human knowledge onto the Tesla. It was named the Solar Library and is thought to just remain on this Tesla car as it orbits around the sun for the next few million years. Starting off in our 10th spot we have the capsules of ancient Egypt. Now ancient Egypt is known for having several unexplored tombs, tunnels and crypts. Now the crypts themselves are often referred to as time capsules because of all the hidden artifacts preserved inside. Other people believe that there are tons of time capsules hidden throughout ancient Egypt. Although they wouldn't be the typical ones that we have today. They believe that these would contain artifacts and scrolls that could give us more information on ancient Egypt. However, people believe that if you open these capsules, then you will be subject to an ancient Egyptian curse, or that you will trigger some sort of booby trap and be killed in the process. Other people believe that if you don't open the capsules correctly, then it could completely destroy the artifacts inside. It's frustrating because these capsules could help us learn more about ancient Egypt, but at the same time, Nobody wants to be cursed. Moving on at number nine, we have the mysterious time capsule at the Washington Monument. Now, during construction of the Washington Monument, workers discovered a mysterious time capsule. They said that this time capsule was over a hundred years old. The capsule was found behind a bronze plaque that had September 12, 1915 engraved on it. People believe that that was roughly the time that the capsule was placed there. Now, no one knows who made this capsule or why it was there. It still remains a huge mystery to this day. Now, many people didn't want to open the capsule, fearing that it may destroy the contents. But they didn't listen, and a year later it was opened. Thankfully, none of the contents were destroyed. Now, I know I technically like cheated with this one because they opened it, but this story was too interesting to not include. Like, they still don't know who put it there. In the capsule, there was a copy of George Washington's second inaugural address, a glass bottle with his portrait, and some coins. So, did somebody put it there on behalf of George Washington, or what? Mystery remains. 
At number eight, we have the refrigerator capsules. Now, in 1939, Westington House filled a capsule with hundreds of items. Some items included alarm clocks, hats, and alphabet blocks. Now, a man named Wayne Donaldson was inspired by that and in the 60s decided to fill a refrigerator and bury it on a hill. A bunch of other individuals followed in his lead and also did this. Apparently, using a fridge worked really well because it kept bugs out and preserved the items. Now, Wayne decided to put items such as a lava lamp, photos, and hit records in the fridge. All of these individuals plan to dig up their fridge when they are 80. But Seriously, hold on one second. Fridges are expensive and they would be a hassle to bury. So you won't catch me doing that. Now, there is a conspiracy that some other people have buried some fridges of their own, but these fridges won't contain lava lamps. Instead, they believe that it may contain dead bodies. In our seventh spot, we have the photograph time capsule. Now, this next story was posted by a Reddit user. Although I'm not sure of its validity, it was too good to not include in this video. So this user said that 20 years ago, him and his four childhood friends made and buried time capsules. Now, they almost forgot about their time capsules, but eventually they remembered and dug them up when they were around 30. But when they dug it up, the user found something more terrifying. Now, in his capsule, he originally placed two medals, a $5 bill, and a Charmander Pokemon card. However, all that he found in his time capsules were photos. Now, he really should not have opened this capsule. Each photo was of him at a different stage of his life, and it was labeled. The first photo was of him at his father's funeral. The caption wrote, soon you will wish you could join your father. Another photo was at his graduation. The person that took this photo is said to be Karma. Now, this is quite scary because he doesn't know who had been taking these photos of him and how it got inside the time capsule. Now, this story may be fake, but people believe that it was the user from a parallel universe contacting himself. One thing for sure is that this Reddit user wishes that he listened to his instinct that told him to not open the capsule. Coming in at number six, we have the Expo 70 time capsule. Now, this time capsule was created by Panasonic and the Manichi newspaper. They wanted to create two time capsules that preserved life life and heritage. Now, the lower time capsule is going to remain buried for another 5,000 more years. The upper capsule was opened in 2000 and another would be opened every 100 years. Now, each capsule is said to contain 2,098 objects. A lot of the objects in the capsules are still unknown. However, some have reported items such as false teeth, handcuffs, a glass eye, and insects and resin. Like seriously, what a random mixture of things. But what are the other items in the capsules? Well. I don't think we'll be alive to get the answer to that question. But hey, if you're watching this video in the year 6000, then comment down below. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the largest axe in the world. Now, let's make our way to my country, Canada. In New Brunswick, a giant axe monument was constructed. This was to commemorate the importance of the lumber and forestry business. Honestly, this is one of the most Canadian things, I swear. Now, this axe is huge. It is made out of 55 tons of steel. It's 23 feet in length and the handle extends about 50 feet in the air. It's massive. Now, apparently there is a time capsule hidden in the axe head and people believe that it will never be discovered. Seriously, what do they have to hide? Why would they put a time capsule somewhere that can't be accessed? And I don't think anyone is going to destroy this monument, so it's safe to say that we will never know Canada's secret. But honestly, it makes me think what other monuments have time capsules inside of them? Maybe the Statue of Liberty? Who knows? But knowing Canada is probably just something like a maple syrup recipe or how to make the best poutine, I don't know. At number four, we have the haunted capsule. Now, this is another story posted on Reddit. What's freaky is I ended up writing about this and then I went back to the page and it no longer existed, so I don't even know. So on January 20th, 2018, this user and his friend found a time capsule while using a metal detector out in the forest. The time capsule had please don't open written on the lid. His friend really wanted to open it, but the user got a bad vibe from it. He even said that when he touched the capsule to open the lid, he felt cold all of a sudden and his vision went dark for a bit. Now, the friend ended up taking the capsule home, but immediately regretted it. He said that the whole night he felt like someone was watching him. The next day, they went back and reburied the time capsule, but they still don't know who put it there, why, and what's inside. 
Honestly, I'm just glad that they didn't open it. Like, it probably would have just unleashed some sort of demon. Sounds like a good basis for a scary movie, though. Coming in at number three, we have The Crypt of Civilization. Now, this chamber was built from 1937 to 1940. And you heard correctly, it's a whole dang chamber, not just a tiny capsule. It's a full 2,000 cubic foot room filled with documents and artifacts. Now, you're not allowed to open the chamber for around another 6,000 years. So, the purpose of the chamber is actually terrifying. It is said to be compiled with knowledge and other contents to preserve our way of life in case of mass extinction. So, this room contains items such as 800 works of every subject, historical recordings, and items to show our technology logical advancements like typewriters. There are other random items like pantyhose and a figurine of Donald Duck, you know, the important stuff. There's also a device that will instruct those who find the chamber to learn how to speak English. Now, people believe that this was made because humanity won't live much longer. They think that another species will dominate or that the government has some sort of sinister plan to deal with overpopulation. This chamber will hold the last memories of the human race. But seriously, imagine finding this chamber and seeing pantyhose. Like, I wouldn't know what they're for. Like, putting them on my legs would be the last thing I would do. Next up at number two, we have Franklin Roosevelt's time capsule. Franklin D. Roosevelt was the 32nd president of the United States. Now, in 1940, Mr. Roosevelt buried a 450 pound time capsule, which is said to be opened in 2040. That's right, this thing is massive. But oddly enough, no one knows what is actually in there. Seems hard to believe that the president was able to bury a huge time capsule with no one even questioning it. When researching, there's hardly any information on it. And people believe that that's for a reason. People think that what the capsule contains poses a threat to national security and should never be opened. They fear that it will reveal harmful government secrets. Other people hope that it will have the frozen president himself in there. Which wouldn't make that much sense if he was still alive when it was buried. But all we can do is make assumptions and hope that nothing bad happens when it's opened in 20 years. And in our number one spot, we have the Richard Nixon time capsule. Now, Richard Nixon was the 37th president of the United States and was said to have hidden a time capsule in the White House. What does this capsule contain, you ask? Well, according to Earl Robert Merritt, Richard confided in him that it contains proof of extraterrestrials. Now, some people don't believe Earl and question his credibility, but he swears that the president met with him in secret and read him a letter stating that the US was protecting extraterrestrials. He also claims that scientists were conducting experiments and communicating with them. Now, the location of this time capsule is still unknown. Only a handful of people know where it's hidden. However, Nixon claimed that it will surface when the time is right. Uh, what do you think? Are aliens real? Will this time capsule expose the US government? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Mental Hospital. In 2015, a construction crew in Indiana discovered a time capsule from 1958 that was put there by the staff of a former mental hospital. It contained their message to the future, to us, and it was in the form of a video. The experts were excited to hear what the message would say, but were disappointed to find that most of the audio was missing. It had degraded over the years. There was only a little bit left at the end where an unknown man said, when the psychiatrists of the future open this time capsule, only they will be able to tell how well we've solved our treatment problems. The audio cuts out, and when it returns, the men are discussing electroshock therapy, a common practice in the 50s used to treat mental disorders, which has fallen out of favor and been heavily criticized over the years. Now, the hospital eventually closed down in 1992. Historians have a hard time figuring out who are the men in the actual video and what the missing audio parts were, especially when it comes to electroshock therapy. Next up at number 9 now we have Abandon. This one comes from Imja where a user shared a strange box they found in their grandmother's house while helping her clear up. It was a safe but the grandmother didn't know the combination. They took a hammer and a chisel to it and when they finally opened it up they quickly realized it was a time capsule. The grandmother believed it must have been put together by her own grandmother many years ago. That made it at least four generations old. Inside they discovered a note that read, Abandon all regret ye who 
enter here. That's a famous line from Dante's Divine Comedy. Now they figured it may be a sort of ominous warning, but they continued to look through the contents. They found a bag with Chinese calligraphy on, which read double happiness. Inside they found a pen, a plastic box, a suede pouch, and an oil lamp. They also found pictures of the grandmother's own grandparents. They were glad they didn't heed the creepy warning on the note. Moving on to number 8 now, we have J.M. Barry. That's the name written on a trunk that was discovered in 2010 by two women who were clearing out an abandoned building in LA. J.M. Barry was a nurse from Scotland and she had the same initials as James M. Barry, the author of Peter Pan, also Scottish. When they opened the trunk up, they were horrified to find the bodies of two babies in there from the 1930s. They were wrapped in sheets and hidden in two doctor's bags along with some old newspapers and other other belongings. Investigators found no connection between the two individuals though, even though a copy of Peter Pan was found with the babies, and there was also membership papers for the Peter Pan Woodland Club Resort. Coroners reported no signs of trauma on the babies and could find no evidence that they had been aborted. One of them had clearly reached full term, while the smaller one may have been born prematurely. Despite there being no concrete link between Peter Pan and the babies, some people have speculated there is one, and that it has something to do with Never Neverland, where children never grow up. Is that a little bit morbid? Do you think there's something darker to this story than meets the eye? Moving on to number 7 now, we have The Boy. In 2016, a demolition crew in Albuquerque, New Mexico discovered a time capsule from 1968 near a former elementary school. It appeared to have been made by a boy at the time who wanted it to be found at some point in the future. The workers were prepared for a cute message, but the letter they found inside proved to be quite a bit creepier. It read, I I am dead. I go to Montgomery School. That is the olden school name. I was born in 1900. You auto. Now I dead. My favourite subject is spooking the police. I play the guitar. In case you don't know what it is, it is a board with strings on them. I am 10 years old. See you later, savages. That was it. That was the whole letter. It was signed by a boy called Greg Lee Youngman. Now, efforts to find Greg today have been mostly unsuccessful. Some people say that's because there really was some sort of guitar playing ghost from a century ago living near that school who had just left the letter. Others say it was just a kid with a large imagination. Either way, the letter itself is pretty creepy. Moving on now to number 6, we have Mother. This is a horrifying story from 2016. A woman in North Carolina thought she had struck an absolute bargain when she bought a freezer from her neighbour for just $30. When she opened it at home though, she was horrified to find human remains in the freezer. The neighbour had put her own mother inside there and simply told the buyer she had been using it as a time capsule. In an interview, the buyer said, she sold me her frozen mother for $30. How do you do something like that? I think an even better question would be why. She said she hadn't seen her neighbour's mother in months but didn't really suspect any foul play. When the police went to investigate on that day, they found the daughter had already left town, telling the buyer that she was going to West Virginia to visit her mother in a nursing home, even though she knew full well where her mother really was. Coming at number 5 now, we have Hiroshima. In January 1968, two Japanese companies agreed to create a joint time capsule project in celebration of Japan's World Exposition Fair in 1970. It was intended to be buried for 5,000 years. The upper capsule was opened in 2000 and is intended to be open every 100 years thereafter. It was intended to give the people of the future an insight into the world of 1970 and also the everyday life of Japanese people. People. It contained artifacts recorded through art, literature, and music. It also contained some more unusual items, including a slinky toy, some glass eyeballs, and the black fingernail of a Hiroshima atomic bomb survivor. It had only been 25 years since the US dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima that led to Japan's surrender, and it was still fresh in the mind of many Japanese people. Human fingernails are made of keratin, which does not decompose, and so this one should still be intact in the year 6970, 5,000, well, almost 5,000 years from now. 
The time capsule's creators felt that this will serve as a grisly but important reminder of the horrors of war for all future generations. Next up at number 3 now we have The Apartment. In June 2010, a French woman called Solange Bouguiron died in the south of France aged 91. When the executors of her will were going through her records, they discovered that she actually owned an entire apartment in Paris that she had never even mentioned before. They noticed that she had been making regular payments for this place for decades. When they finally opened it up, they were astonished to find the apartment had been untouched for all this time. It contained countless paintings, furniture and common elements of early 20th century life. The whole apartment was a time capsule, frozen in time. It turns out that Solange had inherited the apartment after her grandmother died in 1939. At some point during the Second World War, Solange had left the apartment in Paris and fled to the south of France from the Nazis when they arrived. She never mentioned the apartment to anyone, but continued to pay for it over all those years, while the priceless paintings just gathered dust. One of them even sold for 3 million euros at auction. Moving on now to number 2, we have Einstein. In 1939, Albert Einstein wrote a letter to go with the contents of a time capsule that was being buried to commemorate the New York World's Fair. It remains 50 feet underground at Flushing Meadows and is not meant to be opened again until the year 69. 39, 5,000 years after it was buried. Einstein's letter contained some creepily accurate predictions about the future. He talked about the great achievements that science had made in his time, but said that production and distribution of commodities is entirely unorganized, so that everybody must live in fear of being eliminated from the economic cycle, in this way, suffering for the want of everything. Furthermore, people living in different countries kill each other at irregular time intervals, so that all also, for this reason, anyone who thinks about the future must live in fear and terror. This is due to the fact that the intelligence and character of the masses are incomparably lower than the intelligence and character of the few who produce something valuable for the community. When people hear about that message, they often feel like it resembles the world that we live in today. Are people living in constant fear of violence or economic threat? I'm sure the comments section in this video will have a lot to say about that. And finally, number one now we have trophies. A while ago, a man was using his metal detector in some woods when he came across a time capsule. He excitedly opened it, but soon found some disturbing items inside. It was filled with a teddy bear, clothes, photos, a camera, and a girl's Pee Wee softball medal from 2003. It looked like the belongings of a young girl. Soon, people began to speculate that the time capsule actually held the trophies of a serial killer. If true, it's thought the killer wanted to hold on to these mementos of the people they've murdered. They'd chosen the forest as the secluded spot when nobody would find it. They didn't count on this man with his metal detector. The police investigated but concluded that the items were probably innocent memorabilia left as a time capsule by their owner. They tested the items for DNA and began to reference it to the list of unsolved crimes, hoping to find a match that might lead to solving a murder from the past. Right, starting off the video now, I'm going to talk about Greg Wilkinson's letter. In July 2017, a a strange letter was found in a bathroom wall in a house in Sydney, Australia. It was written by a man called Greg Wilkinson, and it contained some disturbing predictions about the year 2060. That wasn't the only thing though. The letter also explained who Greg was, and that he wrote the letter on the 15th of April 1995. He enclosed a picture of he and his wife on their wedding day, and explained how they met. He listed the cost of everyday items there, such as bread and milk. He said that the internet was the hot new thing and that it was currently exploding. Greg even included some information on current technology. He said he was writing the letter on Microsoft Word on a laptop with 8 megabytes of RAM. Greg described that as pretty high end at the time. It does seem quite strange looking back at that because the average smartphone these days is like hundreds of times more powerful than that. The letter begins to take a darker tone though as Greg talks about current generational trends. He said that AIDS is killing thousands of people and that it's decimating poorer countries. Countries. Deaths due to AIDS peaked in the mid 90s in the US but have been falling ever since. This morbid tone continues though when Greg moved on to the predictions for the future. Firstly, he states that his wife thinks the letter will be discovered in the year 2020, but Greg thinks it will be closer to 2060. The letter was found in 2017, and so it seems like his wife was almost spot on. Greg went on to say that he believes there will be an ideological problem.
along with Islam that will plunge parts of the world into what he called a global war that could go on forever. Some people said this was a chilling prediction of jihadism in the decades since the letter was written. Others have said that's wrong and that it's an unfair characterization and the prediction has sparked a lot of debate online. Greg also accurately predicted that China would become a world economic superpower. This may seem very obvious to us now but at the time it was still up for debate as to whether China would be able to handle its own growth. At the end of the letter Greg apologized to those of us reading in the future if his predictions seemed quite bleak. When the story went viral on Facebook many users were impressed with his predictions and some even asked for the upcoming lottery numbers. Nice try. Moving on now we have the Nazi capsule. This is one that I touched on in a previous video but now I have the chance to go into a lot more detail here and the details are quite disturbing. In 2016 a time capsule buried by the Nazis in 1934 was found in Poland. Archaeologists had known about the capsule's existence for a number of years but it was buried under thick concrete. The Nazis had buried it there over 80 years before during the construction of the Ordensburg Cross in Sea building which was used to train officers of the Nazi party. It took professional miners to break through the concrete and even then they had to wade through large amounts of groundwater that had pooled up over the years. Once it was on the surface though, the eager historians opened it up. What they found was both surprising and not really surprising in equal measure. There were a number of photographs including some images of Adolf Hitler. There were newspapers along with two copies of Mein Kampf written by Hitler himself. One of the researchers described the contents of the time capsule as perfectly preserved. The construction of that camp began on April 22nd, 1934. It was made with huge granite foundations and cost 20 million Reichsmarks to construct. It was an important place for the Nazis. They wanted it to be an educational center to train the next generation of Nazi cadets. It had strict requirements on who could be admitted. They had to be at least 5 foot 4, between 23 and 26 years old. They also had to be racially pure. I'm not sure what that means, but it's the Nazis so we can guess that it would be a pretty horrific thing. They had to be in good health and have no physical limitations. Their classes would include studies of politics, world history and philosophy. They would also be taught battle tactics, military drills and sports. The camp eventually went on to become a base for the Hitler Youth. The more details you learn about the camp, the more creepy this time capsule really becomes. Moving on now we have Einstein's letter. In 1939 Albert Einstein contributed a letter that he wrote to the World's Fair time capsule. The time capsule is intended to be open in the year 6939, exactly 5,000 years after it was buried. The time capsule was called Time Capsule 1. In 1964, when the World's Fair returned to the same site in New York, a second time capsule called Time Capsule 2 was buried just 10 feet north of the first one. Along with Einstein's letter, Time Capsule 1 contained 35 small everyday items. These included a fountain pen and an alphabet block set. There were also 75 types of fabrics, metal, plastics and seeds. A small microfilm contained literature, art and news events of the early 20th century. These came to over 10 million words and a thousand pictures. They even included instructions on how to make a large microfilm viewer and a motion picture projector to view the newsreels on there. There were copies of Life magazine, a Cupid doll, one dollar in change and even a pack of Camel cigarettes. The seeds in glass tubes were of wheat, corn, oats, tobacco, cotton, flax, rice, soybeans, alfalfa, sugar beets, carrots and barley. Enough of all that though, let's talk about Einstein's letter. In the years since all this, the world has come to respect Einstein as perhaps one of the most intelligent people to ever walk the earth and someone who seemed to have a great insight into the unknown. That's why people found his letter that described the brutality of war and its place in human nature as quite disturbing. It read as follows. Our time is rich in inventive minds, the inventions of which could facilitate our lives considerably. We are crossing the seas by power and utilizing power also in order to relieve humanity from all tiring muscular work. We have learned to fly and we are able to send messages and news without any difficulty over the entire world through electric waves. However, the production and distribution of commodities is entirely unorganized so that everybody must live in fear of being eliminated from the economic cycle. In this way, suffering for the 
the want of everything. Furthermore, people living in different countries kill each other at irregular time intervals. So that also, for this reason, anyone who thinks about the future must live in fear and terror. This is due to the fact that the intelligence and character of the masses are incomparably lower than the intelligence and character of the few who produce something valuable for the community. I trust that posterity will read these statements with a feeling of proud and justified superiority. Moving on now, we have Dante's time capsule. This story comes from a user on Imja who said that one day his grandmother invited him over to her house to help her sort through some old stuff. Inside a safe in her ceramics room, he discovered a time capsule that even she didn't know was there. He found the safe while clearing out a cupboard and noticed that it had a false bottom to it. The fact that his grandma had no clue what was in there was exciting. It meant that its contents had been lost in time. They were about to discover something really big. Unfortunately, though, his grandmother didn't know the combination to open the safe. After some deliberation, she gave him permission to open it by any means necessary. So they took it outside and they pried it open with a chisel. Inside the box, they quickly realized that the capsule had been put together by one of their own family members. It wasn't the grandmother's parents, but the grandmother's grandmother who had made the time capsule. That meant it was at least four generations old. Inside, they found a message that read, Abandon all regret, ye who enter here. Now, this is a slight change from the famous line in Dante's The Divine Comedy, which reads, Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. They weren't sure why their relative had swapped the words regret and hope. The poem that it's quoting describes a journey through hell, purgatory, and heaven. They weren't put off by this slightly dark overtone, though, and continued to search through the time capsule. They found a black silk bag with Chinese calligraphy on the outside. They translated it to find that it meant double happiness. They opened the bag, which contained an assortment of items, including a pen, a plastic box, a suede pouch, and even an oil lamp. Then they found pictures of his great-grandfather and his great-great-grandmother. Inside the suede pouch was a nice old pocket watch and a bunch of stamps from every corner of the world. The plastic box contained coins that were also from pretty much anywhere you can think of. Some of the countries don't even exist anymore. The final item that they discovered was a single solitary key. There was no note or clue as to what this key was for. It was a total mystery, but mystery was what this time capsule was all about. Perhaps one day someone will figure out what the strange warning on the paper meant and what exactly this key can unlock. But for now, the answers are lost in time. At number 10, we have the rise of communism. In 2019, there was some upkeep being performed at Britain's House of Parliament, and the workers found a time capsule that was left behind by the previous workers. By previous workers, I mean it was from the year 1950. And inside this capsule was one thing and one thing only. It was a bunch of propaganda for the Communist Party. When we look back on these times, we always think about them as a hard split right down the middle. That the Communists were on one side and everyone else was on the other side. But like all things today, there's always a gray area. These guys predicted that there would be a rise in Communism. And even though Communism isn't the biggest power in the world right now, you have to admit that they aren't really in a bad spot. You have Russia, China, and North Korea all repping the Communist flag and no matter what your opinion is on them, you have to say that they are very powerful. Then when you include things like Antifa popping up in America, there's a lot of people that think communism is the true way to live. Could these workers have been right? Are we on the brink of a communist revolution? And number nine, we have the environment. I know if we made a time capsule now, we would for sure put something in there about the environment. What about if you were an 11 year old boy in 1991? I think if I was making a time capsule when I was 11, it would be all about how I want to get superpowers when I grow up and that I want the gnarly collection of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. But that's not what this kid wanted to talk about because he was probably a much better person than me. But Mitch Brogan, who is now 39 and living in London, Ontario, he wrote that in the future, all of the lakes and rivers would not be clean anymore. They would be destroyed by humans. He even went a step further saying that we would have gone to other planets and we would have polluted those planets as well. Well, we still have a few lakes and rivers left before they're all gone and we haven't started trashing space yet, but I really do think there's a few people who are trying. That's definitely probably around the corner. And number eight, we have the Tulsa car competition. In 1957, the town of Tulsa did a competition with a brand new time capsule that was worth a lot of money. The prize was a 1957 Plymouth Belvedere, which basically looks like every car in the movie Grease. The car didn't have any predictions in it about the future, but the way you won the car was you had to guess the population of the town in 50 years, so what the population would be in 2007. And the winner was only off by 2,000 people. That's a pretty spot on 
calculation of population growth. It's pretty crazy. At number seven, we have the New Hampshire Riddle. In 2019, the town of Derry, New Hampshire gathered together to take a look at a time capsule that was buried in 1969. This was a huge moment for the town and everyone was so excited to see what secrets would be locked away in this time capsule. Well, they would be let down because when they opened it, nothing was inside it. Why would someone bury a box with nothing in it? Well, some people thought that this was a message to the future. In the future, there would be nothing left. The idea is that we would have a grim and scary future with no resources. Could this mystery message be a prediction for the actual future? Well, I guess we'll probably know in a few years if everything collapsed. Uh -huh, that's fun to think about. At number six, we have Greg Wilkinson's renovation note. This is actually a very interesting idea. Greg Wilkinson was living in Sydney, Australia. He had bought a home and he had to do some renovations on the entire place. Well, he decided it would be a great idea if he could renovate and leave behind a time capsule note behind one of the walls. That way, if anyone renovated again, they would find the note. The note was hidden in 1995 and he predicted that it wouldn't be found until 2060. Well, I guess he thought his touch-up job was good for 65 years. Well, he was wrong because in 2017, someone found the note and people were shocked by his predictions. He stated that Islam would move in as one of the powerful ideologies in the world and this would lead to conflict between two major religions, that being between Christianity and Islam. The tensions would then spark a war that would go on until everyone realized that the war is pointless. It's a little vague, but some people see this as a prediction for 9-11. It was a conflict between two ideologies which caused the events of 9-11. Eastern versus Western mentality. So is Greg a political genius or is predicting that religions will fight each other just history repeating itself over and over and over again? Next on the list, we have the Magnolia Time Capsule. The Magnolia Bridge has one of the most beautiful views of the city of Burbank. And when people think about Burbank, they think all about movies and TV shows because a lot of stuff was shot there. But there was someone in 1959 that wanted the city to be known for something else. He wanted the city to be known for having the correct predictions of the future. It was Larry Harsnish who was the person who discovered the time capsule. He was a historian and through his readings was able to find out that someone had hidden away a capsule that was cemented into the side of the Magnolia Bridge. So they needed to get some heavy duty equipment to break this thing out. But once they got a hold of it, they were shocked about what they saw. Packed inside it was footage from 1959. Everyone involved got to see what that era really looked like. But there was something else in there. There was also predictions about the year 2009 when the capsule was supposed to be open. It stated that in that year the ground would move on its own like a moving sidewalk and energy plants would be built underground. Well, they were half right. We do have escalators, but maybe nuclear power plants under the earth are just around the corner. Who knows? Elon Musk is doing a lot of stuff with digging holes. Maybe he'll invent something like that. Right after that, we have a message about mental health. Science is always moving forward, and I bet many scientists wish they could peer into the future so they could see if what they're working on is actually right or wrong. This is kind of what happened here. A time capsule from 1958 was discovered in Indiana, and in it was a message from the past to the future. It was from a mental institution, and they directly referenced electroshock therapy and psychiatric drugs. They talked about how they know the science will advance, but one of the biggest problems was that the footage was damaged so it was hard to understand. Predictions about the future, about the advancements in medicine, were correct. The scary part about this was looking at two doctors who practiced electroshock therapy. That's kind of terrifying, knowing that they were electrocuting people to try and cure them. Right after that, we have 2063 AD. In 1963, a time capsule was buried in San Diego. It was supposed to be buried for 100 years. It was all predictions about what the future should look like and when these things would happen. A book was published with all the predictions in them, and the most accurate one by far is that we will discover natural resources that we didn't know existed. Solar and wind are both growing industries that are changing the world. But most of the other predictions, like the ability to travel the speed of light through space, those didn't really work out. Next up, we have an Irish primary school time capsule. There were time capsules that were buried by a ton of schools in Ireland back in 1996. This was a program throughout Ireland called the 2020 Vision Project. They wanted to see what kids thought the future would look like, so they buried time capsules with all of their predictions. And some of the theories were pretty outlandish, like some people thought that cancer, AIDS, and heart disease would all be a thing of the past. I mean, that's a beautiful thing to think about, but it's not a reality at all. In fact, I bet a bunch of people watching this video know people are affected by these diseases. But there was one contributor who wasn't very far off. Joe Duffy, who was a well-known figure in the Irish community, put in his two cents on the project, and this guy was closer than anyone else to what the future would look like. He said the world would be run by greed and we would have telecommunication devices that keep us from meeting face-to-face. -face. And I mean, look at us right now. Look at what's going on. I mean, like, 
on the computer talking to you guys we're not talking face to face but we're talking in a way now i don't think high-tech devices are to blame why we don't see each other face to face also i don't think that they're all completely a bad thing now is as good a time as ever to see how the internet brings people together but greed being a thing that runs the world is very true the struggle between the one percent and everyone else is a real thing that americans are dealing with all the time really the whole world is dealing with all the time and seeing how the american government is so hesitant to help their people in a time of pandemic but is willing to bail out billionaires and banks at every second shows you how powerful greed is at all times. All right, and for number one on our list, we have the Westinghouse time capsule. This time capsule is crazy because it had predictions from Albert Einstein in it. The capsule was buried in 1939, and by far the most interesting part of it were the predictions left behind by the genius. A lot of the stuff he said was bang on, like how the production and distribution of commodities is entirely unorganized so that everyone must live in fear of constantly being eliminated from the economic cycle. In this way, we are suffering because we want everything. That sounds pretty bang on to the way we're living every day. Like think about all the stuff you order on Amazon and how you buy a ton of stuff and how we're constantly trying to stay up with trends so we can be cool or anything like that. It seems like he had a good idea of what our culture was going to be like. All right, starting off now, let's talk about the cyclotron time capsule. Pretty cool name, right? So imagine this scenario. You find a 130 year old time capsule with all kinds of unknown secrets inside it. You go to dig it up, but oh no, there's an 18 ton magnet right on top of it. How did that happen? Well, at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, otherwise known as MIT, a time capsule was buried in 1889. In the decades that followed, everyone forgot the time capsule existed. It fell out of time and memory. 50 years later, the university built their cyclotron particle accelerator right on top of the time capsule's burial spot. For those of you wondering what exactly a cyclotron is, I went to the MIT website and they say a cyclotron is a charged particle accelerator that uses a magnetic field to confine particles to a spiral flight path in a vacuum chamber. Don't worry if that doesn't make any sense to you. It doesn't to me either. All you need to know is that it's essentially a massive magnet. It was right on top of the time capsule, and so by the time anyone remembered it was there, it was kind of already too late. Eventually, the cyclotron was deactivated, but that didn't really help the situation. The 18 ton magnet was still just sitting on top of the time capsule. It's too big to move right now. Nobody knows what's inside the time capsule, and it's been like this for 130 years now and counting. At this rate, it may go on to be the oldest time capsule in America. Moving on now, we have the Baltimore Box. This is a 104 year old time capsule found in Baltimore in 2014. It was discovered during the renovation of the original Washington Monument. It had been placed behind a plaque in a small enclosed space on September 12, 1915. Monument officials discovered it while restoring the interior of the monument. They wanted to know what the original plaster looked like, and so they looked behind the plaque, and there, to their surprise, was the time capsule. Now they believe the time capsule contains commemorative programs from an event and copies of the local newspaper, which is the Baltimore Sun. Naturally, the next step was to open this thing up. However, there was a catch. The reason for the initial renovation was because the monument was suffering from water damage. The time capsule was also in danger. Conservationists feared that the time capsule's contents had been exposed to the dampness for nearly a century and that it may not survive an opening. The box was moved to the nearby Walters Art Museum for safekeeping while restoration continued on the Washington Monument. It was thought the box might never have been opened, but then in 2015, they went for it. To their surprise, the contents were in much better condition than they had originally feared. Now there is debate as to whether they should open the other one at all, but a lot of people say it might be a lot better. So just, you know, go for it crank that open. Moving on now, we have Kalpatra. That's the name of a very famous time capsule from India that many people want to open, but first they'll have to find it. In the 1970s, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi was the much loved leader of India. It was somewhat of a golden age, at least for her career. She wanted a way to solidify this moment forever, to capture it so that future generations would know what that time in India was like. It was also 25 years since India gained independence from the British Empire, so it seemed like a good occasion for a time capsule. The government was also keen on documenting the first 25 years of this new independent India. Because of all this, they decided to build the time capsule and name it Kalpatra. The Indian Council of Historical Research were tasked with coming up with the most important moments in Indian history to put into the time capsule. Professor Krishna Wami led the team and set about getting a huge manuscript ready. Everything looked good, but then things took a turn for the worst. The professor sent his manuscript to famous historian T. Badranath for his opinion. 
opinion. Badranath said that the manuscript had misrepresented historical facts about India. It was back to the drawing board. Meanwhile, things were kicking off for the Prime Minister. Critics said that she was trying to exalt herself in this time capsule. The arguments continued until the time capsule was finally buried in 1973. It was intended to be buried for a thousand years. It didn't quite last that long. Just four years later, the Prime Minister and her government were overthrown. Within a few days, the time capsule was dug up. It cost more than seven times the cost to dig it up than it did to bury it. Some journalists claim to have witnessed what was inside the time capsule, but soon after, it disappeared altogether. To this day, nobody knows where the time capsule is or what exactly is inside it. Some people think it has to be something pretty dark for the government to dig it up and hide it away so quickly. In the years since then, many people have pressed the Indian government about what happened to this Kalpatra time capsule and what exactly is inside it. Next up, we have the Corona capsules. In the 1950s and 1960s, time capsules were buried at the Corona High School in California. They were supposed to be open in the future to give an insight into the life of a school kid at that time. Somehow, though, everyone just forgot where the time capsules were buried. Oops. Oops. In 2012, a team of archaeologists used radar equipment over concrete slabs at the former school, hoping to pick up a signal from the 17 missing time capsules. Some of the former students actually attended, and they too could only guess as to where they were. Some people thought that the capsules may have actually been removed and then moved to the new high school during construction. This new search that everyone was taking part in was pushed because of a pilot TV show for the Travel Channel about unearthing unusual things. They used the radar scans to create three dimensional images of the ground below. They detected two spots that seemed unusual. The first one was a false alarm. An archaeologist had uncovered a concrete slab only to find a heap of concrete and plaster underneath it. Six hours later, the team found a buried surface about 12 feet long by 5 feet wide and about 3 feet below the surface. It seemed promising, but the box they found did not resemble the time capsule that had been buried before. The school is now the historic civic centre, and the council is reluctant to keep digging it up up to search for these time capsules. By the end of that day in 2012, the team had given up hope. The time capsules had to be down there somewhere, but it may take another 50 years until anybody is able to find them. Moving on now, we have the MASH capsule. For those of you who have never heard of MASH, it was an American war comedy drama show on TV from 1972 to 1983. It was a hugely popular show for over a decade and has been consistently ranked in the top 50 greatest TV shows of all time. The final episode was filmed in January. January 1983. Afterwards, the cast of the TV show buried a time capsule in a secret ceremony there. It contained props and costumes from the show over the years. Now, like I said, the burying of the capsule took place in a secret ceremony. As such, nobody knows where this was buried. All that's known is that it was buried somewhere underneath the 20th Century Fox parking lot in Hollywood. In the years since then, this parking lot has shrunk in size as buildings were built over it. This has led some people to believe that the capsule is now directly under the Marriott Hotel. For many years, this was just the accepted story. The MASH capsule was somewhere under a car park or a building next to it. That's not much use when it comes to figuring out where this priceless capsule is. However, years later, Alan Alder, one of the actors on the show, wrote a book in which he claimed that the MASH time capsule had been found. He said it was discovered by a construction worker shortly after the show ended. When the worker tried to return the capsule to Alder and the rest of the crew, Alder told him to keep it. So, that means the capsule is either underneath a parking lot, underneath a building, or it's in the hands of a construction worker who may or may not have opened or buried it. Well, at least we've narrowed it down. Mm -hmm.